Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back in for another episode of Detroit Become Human. In the last episode, I feel like we did a ton of exploring and laying groundwork for Marcus and Connor. Marcus actually had two episodes in the last one that were very deep and went further into Jericho, which I was kind of calling it a cult before in the last episode, and I hate that term because I feel like it gets tainted, and I don't want to think of what these androids are doing and what Marcus is doing as a cult. So I feel like I'm going to be calling it more of an insurgence from here on instead of using the term cult. I think cult came to mind immediately because of the RA9 religion that seems to be going on here with these statues and offerings and the obsessive compulsive RA9 writings. I'm not sure why I just get a bad taste in my mouth when I say the word cult. So it's more of a resurgence, a revolution in a way. But after watching the last episode, I know I always come back with more thoughts that I have thought of while I was editing. And my new one, I'm not going to share it with you guys now. I want to wait and see what happens today with some of the elements of what Marcus is going through. Maybe I will share what I was thinking with Marcus whenever we get to actually have another moment with him. But for now, I'm going to keep it sealed and have a short and sweet intro today because I am very excited to hop in and get started, hopefully with Kara. We kind of missed out on our episode with Kara last time. So I think we do have another art pack to look through that will probably invoke some more thoughts. So I'm gonna keep the intro short and sweet today and jump in with you guys. So we're on art pack five already, which is which is crazy. I feel like we're halfway through the game or maybe a little bit more at this point, which I'm sad about. But this was the chicken place where Hank and Connor were meeting up. Looks pretty much the same. I think this one's called chicken truck something. I feel like it was called something different in the game. Something I can't remember because it was very like, why is a chicken place say that? I like the guy just like walking, holding a coffee that he's about to maybe throw away. The chicken. Wait, this one's just called chicken. I like the chicken. I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> Smoked pulled pork. Ooh, yum. So this one, it looks like it's like popped up in a different area. Maybe they were going to have it in the city, but decided to have it in this like underground, which I feel like is definitely more of Hank's vibe. And we kind of got a deeper insight into who Hank really is. He's that investigator that lets the small stuff roll off of his shoulders and partakes in illegal gambling because it's fun. And he just doesn't feel like that is his job, which is pretty, pretty on par with how I see an investigator, especially one that works in the city. Uh, inside the apartment building with the bird guy or the bird android. Look at the blue blood handprint that's like smeared on the door. I don't know what that door says. It's backwards. Maybe the name of the apartment building, but the RA9 and that crazy maze as Hank called it. He called it a looks like a maze, which it does. It does look like a maze. Found some bird feathers in the hall. Pigeons everywhere. I think I was so in the moment of trying to find the guy that I didn't really look at the walls. I don't know if they... Oh, no. I think I did remember seeing in the bathroom. There was RA9 and there was also some of the mazes in there. It's kind of interesting that an android cares about birds like that. Plus, we also found that notebook with all of the RA9 and maze drawings in it. Connor said that it was indecipherable, which I thought was interesting. I don't know why I just kind of thought that since he's an android, he would understand it. But maybe it's only deviant androids that can understand that kind of writing. Jericho is written on the wall over there. Definitely didn't see that when we were looking for the guy. I think I was very overstimulated with the amount of birds that were just flying every time I tried to walk. Chasing the guy. That was a pretty epic chase. Um, also, I love using the controller. I think it's much more immersive. I tried to figure out how to switch the Xbox prompts to PlayStation 5 because I'm using a PlayStation 5 controller. 
Um, and I couldn't figure it out. And I kind of gave up after like 30 minutes of downloading a bunch of stuff that I just don't know how to use. So I think I'm pretty tech savvy. I mean, I got my two computer setup running very well, but for some reason I couldn't figure out how to do the emulation. So I'm just gonna memorize the Xbox controls and hope for the best on that one. It's like A, B, X, and Y. Um, so I'm just gonna stick with that, but I was gonna switch back to a keyboard and mouse, but I just, I like the immersion that comes with using a controller. Running through the fields, lavender. <laughs> they should show the lavender field one. That would be a beautiful picture. Plus them like running through it frantically. Rewatching the scene, very cool. Android chasing Android, hot pursuit. Crazy, crazy chase ran through these fields which is interesting because we saw the poster for the fields um that's where we we looked behind that one poster i mean maybe no correlation but it was behind the green poster i forget what the company was called dh something yeah the bus scene i missed that prompt i was so scared that connor was gonna fall off that train but he ended up making it, so bless. That the game <laughs> didn't make Connor just like fall off the train. That would have been horrible. Into the plant room. I don't remember the bursting through the window. We just kind of went through the very crowded doorway. I love how much they put into this chase. Urban Farm, that's what it was called, I think. I feel like it was called Urban Farms, but I thought there was like an initial, um, like a three letter DH something. Very cool. Oh, UPD, that's what it was. Was he wearing UPD attire? I mean, we never really saw him. So I'm guessing in the artwork renditions, they have him maybe working uh -huh, maybe like working for this urban farm place as an android and then coming home or maybe he found that abandoned apartment and decided to start his pigeon farm and crazy notebook bathroom full of ra9 very interesting that makes more sense now that he would work in these fields he knew the area very well <laughs> he knew where he was going I wonder if that was maybe another rendition of our guy. He got a fake ID and everything. Like he was really trying to just make a life for himself. Look at his fly. I don't know why I'm so drawn to that very interesting fly. <laughs> More people that work for UFD. Okay, so it stands for Urban Farms of Detroit, UFD. I feel like that has to be significant if they're making, maybe it's just the workers that worked in that chase scene area. Maybe nothing more to it, but. Look at the bottom um, of that Android. Is that a pack of cigarettes? I mean, he's using it for cigarettes, but maybe he's not an Android. <laughs> he doesn't have like the Android um, armband and the triangle on him so maybe he's just a regular worker working alongside the androids look at how yeah disheveled compared to the androids i mean human i shouldn't say disheveled he looks like he's just a working man with the id badge um gloves kind of like shoved in the pockets versus wearing them all day long has to be very uncomfortable Interesting. I like how they put that side by side like that. Some sort of plant droid. Maybe like a flyable one. It looks like it can fly. Interesting. You can just transport plants back and forth to different um, farms or areas or maybe to distributors. That's pretty cool. Drones. I feel like drones were like going to kick off for a while there. Um, drones started to get very popular and then people started to be able to just buy drones. I thought that there was going to be more to that, but 
with technology, sometimes there are mistakes. And if you're gonna deliver people's packages and there's like a heavy wind and the droid, the drone can't handle it, then people's packages get lost. And I feel like I just remember an uptick in the news talking about in the future, you know, packages are gonna be delivered by, by drones. And then nothing really came of it, at least not in my area. I don't know if maybe they do some of that for some things, but I feel like drones are pretty much just used to make epic videos now in Hollywood and YouTube. Detroit Field and Sky. They really put a lot into like making this grow, this grow place. I also think it's really cool how in Detroit, they're using the rooftops to grow this entire thing. It's very neat. The launching of the drone. Oh, look, it's like carrying away. Very cool. What is this? The bus station? Oh, Ferndale. This Ferndale looks a lot more chaotic than the one that we were brought into. I mean, maybe it was like the outside. We never really got to go up into the city. We just kind of went down into the station. No, we did go into the city. So yeah, it just looks wildly different. Because we went in the Android, we went on the people side of the stairs. We took the escalator versus going down the Android stairs. I remember that now. I think I've mentioned this before, but I wonder why they chose Detroit. I haven't looked into it because I'm worried about Googling anything until I'm done with my playthrough for spoilers, but I wonder why they picked Detroit to base this game in. Marcus following the graffiti. Look, there's a maze on that pole to the right there. Oh, and to the left, there's a couple. The inside of the building. There's Jericho. Looks pretty much like how we saw it in the game. A dilapidated ship jumping off into the water. What a way to get into that ship gonna be interesting getting out i guess there are like holes and stuff all over things to grab onto very crazy i guess it hasn't really sank because it's already rock bottom in the harbor it's just kind of chilling there the leap of faith from marcus you can see his body what an epic way to get into the ship. <laughs> Still don't understand how we lost our jacket doing that though. I liked that jacket, it was cool. The inside. Look at the little mouse on the table. <laughs> oh, and the, the other mouse crawling up the pole. Our very bright flashlight. This was such a creepy and scary scene. This entire episode, I was on edge. I think I, I was sweating so much. <laughs> and the random android that just like ran across the hall. Someone said that in the comments that was North, but they were like on all fours. They weren't really acting like a, I don't know. They kind of reminded me more of Ralph. I like to think of that person as maybe like someone more like Ralph that found their way to Jericho and maybe stays in that back room where we saw RA9 written all over the place. They kind of just scurry along in the halls and don't trust the other androids or want to be by themselves. That's kind of how I envisioned that crazy android scurrying around. <laughs> Especially after finding, yeah, this back room. What is up with that poster? That is the second time I've seen that poster. It was also in the dead guy's artwork. There's a flashlight on the bed in this one. Maybe originally going to find the flashlight on the bed, but wandering around in the dark for that long was probably too creepy. Or too difficult. 
This is a cool shot. I like this. Pretty much how it felt. We like dropped down from the sky, broke our ribs, woke up to a bunch of androids just kind of standing around us in a circle. Very creepy. Oh, neat. Them like camped out. <gasps> Is that one android holding a child? Oh, it's all bloody. And there's another child like sitting next to the water bottle full of blue blood huddled around a fire. I wonder what that one guy's looking at. I like how that one android on the right is very intrigued by the glow stick. <laughs> Same. There's like glow sticks. Ooh, I love the glow sticks kind of like scattered about. I like that. I wish they would have added that. Oh, it's Lucy. I don't know who the person on the left is. Maybe just another. Oh no, her nameplate says Lucy. Okay, so maybe a couple renditions of who Lucy is, was. Wonder what she's been through. <clears throat> her story, if she decides to share with us, is probably a pretty bad one considering the condition that she is in. I don't know why, but when I first saw Lucy, what came to mind was the film of Kara being taken apart and because probably the back of her head is missing completely. I just got that like vibe that she broke free from being disabled or something. I don't know, but it, it I, seeing everything else that is going on with her body, I feel like she was just beaten really badly. Another Android that's seen better days. And it also, you guys brought it up to me in the comments, which it makes a lot more sense. I was kind of just thinking very literally, which I tend to do a lot. So thank you for pulling me out of my literal thoughts. But I mentioned that I didn't really understand why they were so disheveled and needed parts and blue blood when they're guaranteed to survive for a hundred years. But that's just the battery. They have obviously been through stuff, been abused, hurt, something to get to that breaking point of them snapping and becoming deviant. So it makes sense that they need parts and components and blue blood because they probably lost a lot just trying to get to Jericho. I mean, look at Marcus. It's like their brain. So interesting to look at. It's like a ball of just things that they hook into. Maybe the people of Jericho. I recognize the one on the right. That looks a lot like one of the guys. Maybe the middle guy was, um, I'm blanking on his name, Jake or Todd or something. The one that we went to go talk to again, Ralph? No, not Ralph. I'm terrible at names. I think that was it with this art pack. Yep. Okay. I'm hoping that we come right in with Kara and Alice. I love all of the storylines. I'm just sad that last time we didn't get a moment with them. November 6th, 2038, 7.45 p.m. You're gonna be okay? We'll get some help here. Soon this will all be just a bad memory. This isn't Jericho. Where are we? This is the place. Why did we get coordinates here? Mm, it's gonna be like another Ralph situation. Find help. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this place. <laughs> oh, she sneezed. 
feel like she's had a little cold since we left Todd's. Okay. Maybe ring the doorbell. Knock. Hello? Oh, okay. Zlatko? Who's asking? I was told you could help us. I don't know who told you that. <laughs> you came to the wrong place. I'm sorry. Wait. We really need your help. Is he, he's a human. What did he see the kid and... Come in. Realize the situation? He seems a little testy. Come on in. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Follow his lot go, okay? This house is huge. Luther, would you be so kind as to take these ladies' coats? <laughs> oh, don't be afraid of our big friend here. He Luther's is just huge. another android that I helped. He keeps me company in this big, empty old house. He's definitely a bodyguard. What's up with that creepy picture of the girl? Do you guys see that back there? Why does that look so Please? demonic? Make yourselves at home. I don't like that. There's some weird vibes here. I'm not sure. I feel very uneasy. I'm scared. How, does he have How such did a you hear about me? An android. On the street, he said you could help us. I see. Why is his hands blue? Deviant, huh? Like they're stained. She's human. And you want to find a safe place. Somewhere you can start a new life. His whole shirt's covered I in blue blood. Canada. It's very lovely at this time of year. We need to get out of here. Beautiful landscapes, open spaces, clean air, and no android laws. Great place for a fresh start. That's not true. Yes, that's, that's exactly what we want. Of course. I can help you. But first, we have to get rid of your tracker. Tracker? What? Yeah. All androids are fitted with a tracking device to locate them at all times. That time. can't be true. The cops would have already found us. I'll remove yours, and then you'll both be safe. He's lying. Come on. Follow me. How are we so naive? Uh, the little one can wait for us in the living room. No. No. She always stays with me. Of course. I don't like this. Right this way. I hate everything about this. This guy. Everything we need is in the basement. Oh, no. In the basement? Oh, hell no. Did you guys see all of the blue blood that was tainted, like, just absorbed into his skin and his hands and all over his shirt? That creepy picture? I don't like what's going on here. I don't like it at all. Can we just leave? Hi, thank you for the hospitality. Crap. Come on, Kara, don't be this naive. What does that say? Fugue subjects? History of painting? A lot of old books. Can I look closer at this? No. Sorry. I don't like this place. I don't like it either. And that man. Me either. Let's go. I have a bad feeling. Me too. 
Careful, reassure, comfort. He's a bit odd, but I think we can trust him. No! Look at this place! Not much of a choice anyway. This is a dungeon! <gasps> I'm so scared right now. Please excuse the mess. I needed somewhere discreet for my machines. Stop. Removing trackers is illegal, so I opted for discretion over comfort. She looks so freaked out. Too scared. No. She no, is she'll be all right. very scared. What are you seeing there? Come on, Alice. I don't like this. This way, please. Wait, what did that say? Something unlocked. Check on Alice. Okay. Yeah, she like does not want to come in here. What is he about to do? If you could just stand over there. This looks bad. Man, I really don't want to do this. We don't have any other options, though. Look at the cyber life bins. I should warn you, this could be quite unpleasant. Oh, no. He's about to, like, turn us off or something, er. Oh, this is awful. You know what's strange? For some unknown reason, the trackers seem to stop working in Deviants. That's why it's so hard to find them. This guy's mental. So, actually, there's no reason to remove your tracker. What? But you said that... Yeah, the people believe what they want. Can I get out you of here? You Deviants are so naive. I need They'll to get out of to here. Me expecting me to help them. And I just reset them. Oh my them god. Up. Or I keep them for my little experiments. No! No! I don't want to be reset! Let me go! Ah! Oh no. I forgot about the child. Uh, lock it up. I'll deal with it later. Alice! Oh my god. Alice, no! Wow. Deviant that wants to be a mother. That's that's so sweet. And so deluded. You're deluded. I think it's time we put you out of your misery. Um... <laughs> oh no! Ah. I don't like that noise. <gasps> Reset one percent preparing memory wipe. for having a dream it always ends up the same way tears and disillusionment believe me you're better off being erased and feeling nothing no more pain no more hopes dashed I almost envy you Kara! oh uh... <laughs> Oh, poor Aww. little Alice. Oh, looks like mommy doesn't remember you at all, huh? What's looks wrong like with this guy? Looks like mommy's completely forgotten you. Cara, what happened <laughs> to oh you? Oh my god, I'm so oh. sorry. All right, that's enough. Come on. I didn't. <gasps> you bit me. I'm gonna teach you some manners, you little bitch. Oh man. Cara! This guy's worse than Todd. I'm so scared. Meet me in the living room. What? Meet me in the living room. We have to get... There has to be a way to, like, escape or something, right? Yeah, find a way to escape. Okay. Uh, 28%. Jeez. Um... Pull on these cables. This is crazy. 
No. Okay. Um, there were more cables over here. Okay, let's pull on the, this one, the green one. Ah! Cool. Let's go. Okay, that did something. Drink spilled on the floor. Push. something oh I might get electrocuted reset okay so it's breaking in okay okay we made it okay get up we have to go find Alice Corruption repaired. I was worried that, like, the percentage was going to be bad. Find Alice. Okay, nothing in here. <gasps> oh my god, what is that? Um, okay. There's like things in here. There's something in here. <gasps> Help us. I think they're androids. I should open it, right? They need help. No. This can't be happening. What? <gasps> he likes to play with us. <gasps> Creating monsters for his amusement. Oh, that's awful. But who's the real monster? He what is. He did to us. Oh my god. <sighs> Get out. Just leave. Yeah. Just you guys. Go, go to Jericho or something. These poor androids. Are there more? Like more doors? No. Can I unlock this one? Maybe they're all in the same. Oh my God. Um, okay. It's like Sid from Toy Story where he messes with all of his toys. This guy is mental. I feel like I should be careful up here. The front door has a prompt. Luther! Luther! Yes, Lockwood. We should be done here in 10 minutes or so. I'll have a look at the little one, see what I can do with it. Understood, Slacko. I'll bring you the little one in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, so we have a timer. Um, I feel like this is... I don't want to leave, but maybe we're just going to, like, op unlock the door. It's locked. Great. All right, so we really need to... We need to hurry. Is there anything in here? There's something over here. This place is so dilapidated. Okay, so this door is open. Yeah, Alice is still inside. Okay. I didn't think that it would make us leave her, but I was also worried. Okay, so let's get upstairs. I don't think there's much else for us to find over here. We're on a timer or two. Oh 
creepy painting. Okay. I mean, technically they think we're being reset and he said to find us, find him upstairs. So maybe we can just pretend that we've been reset. We're like sneaking around though. Okay, let's go in this room first. Oh, just kidding. We'll go in this one then. Oh, look at all these parts in here. Oh. Observe. RA9. What does that say? To workshop? What else is in this room? Before we leave. I need to hurry. in this cage. <gasps> is that a bear? <gasps> Should I free it? I'm scared, but maybe it can help us? <gasps> okay. 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 That was really scary. I was nervous about that. Oh, this is terrible. Look at all of the androids just laying about that are all... Oh, this is a nightmare of a house. This is awful. I kind of want to stay out of the hall. What are you doing here? Has the master authorized you to be here? <gasps> Shh! You must always obey the master. Oh, no. Yes, you must always obey. No, shh. You should not be here. Be quiet. You have... What are you doing? You're not gonna hurt me. He looks so... No. no. No, you wouldn't do that. Shut down, Alice. I'm looking for a little girl. Have you seen her? A little girl? No, no, no. I haven't seen her. Okay make a deal I don't know what that means you'll be quiet if I let go yes yes I promise to be quiet oh we're covering his don't speaker oh he wants to live no no of course not I mean what is that life but he asked me to let him live and The corridor? Oh, I hope that's not the hallway. <gasps> oh! Uh-oh! Wait, he's not alerted. Hello? Hi. I'm sorry. About the little one. What did he do to her? His wheel turned yellow. Is she in here? Oh, a news article. All right, we'll just skim it because um, we don't have time to read it. Uh, we can read it later. Okay, what's over here? How much time do we have? <gasps> Five minutes, okay. A gun? Okay. It's not loaded. Oh, dang. All right. I'll just continue. I don't know where I am. I'm very lost. I'm just kind of like hurrying and trying to figure out where Alice is. Is there something in the fireplace? Check. Interesting. Okay, well, we know that's there for later, maybe. I'm not sure why we would pick that up. 
turn on? I don't want to turn the TV on. I think that's a TV, right? Yeah, I don't want to turn that on. That's going to make noise. <sighs> Alright, I guess we should go back to the... Corridor. Back out the way we came. It'll be okay. I don't really know where we are, but. Luther! <gasps> yes, Lot. I'm finished here. Go fetch the little one. <gasps> right away, Zach. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, let's try to hide. Yeah, hide. Where? There's a lot of hiding places in this house, right? Okay, we'll just hide here, sure. Not go! What? The little one is gone! I can't have just disappeared. You gotta be here somewhere. What are you waiting for? Go look! Oh god. My heart is pounding. Please don't look under here. It's not a very good hiding place. I'm so scared right now. Luther, what the fuck are you doing? Come here. Coming. <gasps> Can we get out now? Oh my god, we don't have much time. Yeah, let's set fire. Set it on fire. Run out of here. We need to hurry. They'll be here soon. Okay. Go, 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 go. Smoke everywhere. Oh my god, I'm stuck. There's a fucking fire! Luther! Let's leave, let's go. <gasps> oh god. I thought we were going to the other side of the room. Let's get out, let's go. <gasps> oh my god! Is that a shotgun? Uh, the back door, the back door's open. Go, go, go! We know the back door's open. Run! <gasps> no! I got it wrong! Oh, no! Alice! No! Go, Alice! No! I won't leave! Go! Run as fast as you can! I warned you, dreams always end in tears. You should have listened to me. What are you doing? Get out of my way. No, not this time. I said get out of my way or I'll shoot right through you. All of the gantries from the basement. Who let you out? The thing we unlocked, though. Get away from me! Get away from me! Obey me! I'm your master! I'm your master! That was wild. Jeez, they killed him. 
I mean, he deserved it. Look at what they did to the. Oh, oh. I was. I didn't want to hurt you. Kind of expecting that. He programmed me to obey him. When I saw the little one risk her life to save you, it was like opening my eyes for the first time. Oh. Finally, I could see. That's what caused him to go deviant? I know you have no reason to trust me after what I did. But I know someone who could help you across the border. I could take you there. I could protect you. You and the little one. Aww. All right. I trust you. things inside made it out before I decided to burn it down. Oh my goodness. That was insane. My heart, I think, is still pounding outside of my chest. I really wish that I could have the PlayStation prompts because this sucks. What a crazy storyline. So I'm assuming that Zlatko sent out that garbage man android to find deviant androids and give him the location and that's how he's been using and abusing these poor androids it's awful to see wow i missed a lot of stuff or maybe sneak through the house oh maybe if we didn't escape from the reset we would have gone a different path that makes me think that even if we were reset, we would have eventually been able to get our memory back somehow. Very interesting. I love how there's more than one way to play this game. I think that is something that is amazing and definitely has me already thinking about what I'm going to do on my on my second playthrough. So it looks like 57% escaped before being reset. So a little more than half. Three monsters. Oh, I think that's the news article. Oh, no, that was, yeah, 97% free of uh, free the, I don't like the term monsters because they are androids, but I mean, they have been turned into creatures for sure. Oh, there wasn't a percentage on kill or spare the bathroom android. Free the bear, 60%. I was a little bit nervous about that one, if you guys couldn't tell, but I freed the ones downstairs and I felt like the bear is probably been used and abused as well. So I wanted to free it. I just wanted it to be free. I wanted to get everything and anything out of that house. That's why I ultimately set it on fire too. That was my first initial thought when we took the log out and picked it up and checked the embers. I just thought that we were going to be burning that house down. Once I saw that and knew the way out, the correct way out, I knew what my plan was in motion. Just like escaping Todd's house. I knew what I wanted to do. Get out the window. Don't grab the gun because I don't want that for Kara. Get out as quickly as you can with as little footsteps as needed. So we pretty much did the same thing here. I saw my strategy of burning stuff down and getting out. It also seemed like it caused a pretty good deviation from us because we were able to kind of sneak out the door as Luther went to go check the check why everything was on fire. There is a room that I missed. I thought that I had missed a room. I was just so nervous about continuously popping in and out, trying to find Alice before either Zlatko saw us or before Luther had to go and get Alice. But I kind of had a feeling that Luther was going to do that for us because he apologized for Alice, which to me and his wheel turning yellow like that, I feel like he already knew that he wasn't really going to catch us. Plus, he was walking so slowly. He wasn't like running after us in pursuit. He was doing what he was told. But when the time came, he decided to do what was right and do what his deviated, now deviated mind was telling him to save us. And I love how what actually got Luther to 
turn deviant is that he saw how much Alice loved us. That is what ultimately caused him to deviate. So I feel like I remember reading that Canada doesn't accept androids into their country. I felt like I remember reading a news article about that. So I'm concerned about their plan of going to Canada, crossing the border, all of that. We would have to get fake IDs. We would have to get passports. And I mean, we're with Alice. How are we going to cross the border unless we sneak into the border, which is very sketchy? How are we going to cross the border with Alice with a police report saying that she's missing? I just, I feel like they would be able to tell, especially with all of the technology and face scanning and whatever else that they have going on. I just feel like it's a really risky plan. Which, speaking of reading, we should go read that news article that I had to skip in the moment before I forget about it. Okay, so it was this article from Detroit Today, How Androids Alter Your Brain. Talking to machines is changing the way we communicate. Cyberlife World's first trillion dollar company, global population reaches 10 billion. How Androids Alter Your Brain. Most people spend more time talking to androids, smartphones, tablets, and entertainment systems than they do other people. A recent study has found that this kind of talking called command-led communication is characterized by instructions and orders rather than persuasion, humor, or intimacy. That adjustment to our everyday speech is altering our brains, with persuasion skills getting weaker through lack of use. This is especially true of younger generations. Command-led communication has fostered a generation of adolescents with highly limited social skills. And because of COVID and everything like that, there's a lot of things that are hindering social skills that are pretty alarming to think about even today. The same study, young people were found to have developed very different communication centers in their brains. Employers have long complained of the difficulty in finding graduates who know how to influence and convince others. But with people, especially young people, spending more and more time with their machines, it's difficult to see how the situation will improve. And it's just going to get worse over time. American ships fired on. Yeah, we didn't read this one. President Warren at 33% approval. UN world warns of World War III. Arctic tensions escalate. Uh, Russian aircraft carriers reported to have fired on American patrol boat in the Arctic. With the US vessel returning fire, neither ship was damaged. President Warren recently called Russia's activity in the Arctic a crime against, crime against the international community referring to their mining of valuable minerals and the retreating ice shelf. She also branded Russian President Artem Ivanov as a dangerous individual. Many international relation experts are saying an armed conflict is inevitable. Yeah, I mean, if you're firing at each other and returning fire, yeah, I'd say so. November 6, 2038, 7.51 p.m. We're back with Connor. Ooh, in the Zen Garden. Okay, I guess we're just finding Amanda. Yeah, find Amanda. What are we holding? Looks like, oh, an umbrella. She's over there, but I want to go see this stone again. I don't know if we're supposed to be touching it, but I'm very intrigued by it. I wonder if we can touch it again. <gasps> we can. It like shocks us and makes the wheel turn yellow. I can touch it another time? It didn't do that last time. What, it didn't hurt us that time? Interesting. Okay. I like how the butterflies are flying around even though it's, maybe they're android butterflies. Butterflies don't fly in the rain. I love the sound of the rain right here. You can hear it falling on the bridge that we're on, but also into the water down below and to the, the lily pad puddles. This is the perfect rain soundtrack. Rain is probably my favorite weather. Rainy thunderstorms. I feel like rain kind of reminds us to slow down. Move slower, do less. All right, let's go see Amanda before th she thinks we've lost it. 
Hello, Amanda. Connor, I've been expecting you. Would you mind a little walk? That's who the umbrella is for. That deviant seemed to be an intriguing case. A pity you didn't manage to capture it. Oh no. Pragmatic, explain, no excuse. Let's try to explain. Deviants are completely irrational, which makes it difficult to anticipate their behavior. But I should have been more effective. Did you manage to learn anything? Diary signs on the wall. Let's talk about the diary. I found its diary, but it was encrypted. It may take weeks to decipher. What else? Signs on the wall? The walls of the apartment were covered with drawings of labyrinths and other symbols. Like the other deviants, it seemed obsessed with RA9. You came very close to capturing that deviant. How is your relationship with Lieutenant developing? She knows. Saving Hank? Oh, jeez. Uh. He seemed grateful that I saved his life on the roof. She's gonna hate he that. He didn't say anything, but he expressed it in his own way. We don't have much time. Deviancy continues to spread. It's only a matter of time before the media finds out about it. We need to stop this. Whatever it takes. I will solve this investigation, Amanda. I won't disappoint you. A new case just came in. Find Anderson and investigate it. How did she know like that? That was a very android. Because remember when Connor was able to kind of just like blink and then he knew that a new case came in? And look, he's getting the case now. Is Amanda an android? She doesn't have a button. Okay. Oh, nice. We get to ride in a taxi. <laughs> Look for Lieutenant Anderson. Okay. What are we just like peek in his window? Maybe we should try the door first. <laughs> Lieutenant Anderson. Oh. Anybody home? What a horrible ring. Maybe he's not here. Or maybe he's sleeping. Oh, it's the doggo. What's his name? It's something cute. I think it's like sumo or something. I see some like Chinese food. It looks like a chair's overturned over there. his car why is it parked like this remember when sex was safer wait remember when sex was safe and driving was risky <laughs> um okay what a crazy stickers he always has he is obsessed with these stickers is that a poop emoji oh no it just says i loved detroit Um, wait, can we look in that window? Mm, can't see anything in here. Looks like maybe his room, but we can't see much. Well, let's go around back. Can we jump this? No? All right, let's go around the other side then. Maybe he came home like super wasted or something. I don't know. He likes to drink. It's 
pretty late. I hope he's okay. This is kind of weird. Sorry, my earbud was falling out. Aw, he's like wagging his little tail. I feel like he would be on high alert if something was wrong. <gasps> oh my god! Hank is unconscious. Lieutenant Anderson! Break. Oh my god. Easy. <gasps> Dog. Sumo. I'm your friend. <laughs> See? Good thing we learned his I know your name. name. I'm here to save your owner. Oh, he's so cute. He said, okay, I'll just go eat then. <laughs> Good luck. I hope he's okay. It looks like he just probably passed out from drinking, maybe. <gasps> Why is there a gun next to him? Stop. Examine. Wait, let's get this angle. There we go. Looks like a bottle of Jack Daniels. Black Laum. Instead of <laughs> Scotch Whiskey, 40% alcohol. Yeah, sounds like Jack. Revolver, one bullet remaining. One bullet, huh? One bullet in the chamber? He's okay. No signs of trauma, slate arrhythmia, probably from the heavy drinking. Alcohol. Lieutenant. <laughs> Wake up, Lieutenant. Yeah, he's just wasted. Poor Hank. Oh! It's me, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sober you up for your own safety. Hey, I have to warn you. Leave me alone, this may be unpleasant. Android. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my house. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Oh my but I need god. Hey. Thank you in advance <laughs> for your cooperation. We get the fuck out of here. <laughs> He's so done. <laughs> he is posted. Tank Hank to the bathroom. Yeah, he needs like a cold shower. Shut up. Attack! <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Attack. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck, I think I'm gonna be sick. Yeah, I bet you are. You need a nice vomit, one of those cheeseburgers, and a cold shower. Oh, leave me alone, you asshole. I'm not going anywhere. <sighs> Go to the wall. I'm not grumpy, I just don't like doing? you. And... Oh, I don't want a bath. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Lieutenant. You need one. It's for your own good. <laughs> okay. Ah! Ah! Turn it off! Turn it off! Ah! <laughs> are you awake? What the fuck are you doing here? A oh, homicide was reported 43 minutes ago. I couldn't find you at Jimmy's bar, so I came to see if you were at home. <sighs> Jesus, I must be the only cop in the world <laughs> that gets assaulted in his own house by his own fucking android. <sighs> Can't you just leave me alone? Rational, aggressive, solution. <laughs> if you're unable to conduct this investigation, I'll have to inform your superiors. Uh, Go ahead, tell them I don't give a shit. Lieutenant, you're not yourself. You should beat it, you hear me? Get the hell out of here. <sighs> I didn't mean to press aggressive, but... Um, tease or leave? Let's tease him. Wait. I understand. Dang, x It probably control. wasn't interesting anyway. A man found dead in a sex club downtown. Guess they'll have to solve the case without us. You know, probably wouldn't do me any harm to get some air. There's some clothes in the bedroom there. 
I'll go get them. He's interested in the case. Oh my goodness. All right, so bring him some clean clothes. I just want to see what these say, what this says. Today will be fabulous, da 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 da. Aww. Keep strong, maybe? Can't read some of these. Shaving or not? <laughs> Oh man, Hank is crazy. All right, so this is probably his bedroom. Let's go get him some clothes. That entire- What do you want to wear? Whatever. Whatever, okay. Hippie, strippy, or streaky? <laughs> Let's do hippie. That whole interaction was very funny. Oh, is he vomiting? <laughs> Are you all right, Lieutenant? <coughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> Wonderful. Mm. Just uh, give me five minutes, okay? <laughs> sure. Oh, my. Oh, they showed it. Learn more about Hank? Yes. I'm excited about this. Okay. Well, let's go look in his bedroom first. There's an article here, but I don't know how long he's going to take. So I'm just going to do what I've been doing and kind of look at the titles. We'll read them after. I don't know how much time we're given to look at all of Hank's things. He's probably going to be done vomiting soon. Oh, I guess that's all that's in here. Okay. Can I go out here? No. Nothing there. Alright, so there's something. Oh, I wish I could look at his books. Can we see what he was searching? We can pet Sumo. Aww. He's a good boy. He looks like a big love bug. What is on his... Man's... That, like, bookshelf. It looks like a chainsaw. Oh, maybe it's like a swordfish. He did have a fish picture. Wait, stop. What was that? LB. Hank loves jazz. Okay. Didn't see that coming. Thought he only liked death metal. Take. Autumn Blues, Michigan Brothers, Detroit Soul Records. So he loves jazz. Okay. I thought he only liked like really angry music, but maybe he only listens to that at work to get amped up. I definitely like am the same way where I will throw on different playlists depending on how I'm feeling, but I really like rock like rock will always be one that i come back to and listen to but i listen to pretty much everything country has kind of gotten sparse because i just don't love the new country music that's coming out i feel like it's all the same twang and sounding i don't know it's just kind of like putting the same lyrics to the same beat is what country has kind of turned into but i love all music i listen to pretty much everything <laughs> But rock is always like my one that I will come back to. Oh, he went back to the chicken place. His badge is there. What's that? Something else was on the table. A kid? Cole Anderson, deceased. Hank lost his son. Okay. Be a good dog, Sumo. I won't be long. I couldn't look at the gun. I took too long. It's unfortunate. I think he was playing Russian roulette, though. 
with the one bullet in the chamber i don't know i just kind of feel <laughs> and it's titled russian roulette okay well i guess that answers my question but i wonder if we could have asked hank about it and maybe unlock something else dang I knew that he was only going to take so long in the bathroom. That's why I was kind of like trying to rush around, but we missed one thing. I actually really, really liked that a lot. I like that we got to meet Sumo and kind of see the inside of Hank's life a little tiny bit. It's very sad about his son. I wonder how that happened. And seeing as how it unlocks something, I'm guessing we can ask him about it. But I feel like if it does have to do with androids or the reason for why he is who he is today he's probably going to be pretty close-minded about us asking but maybe since we're friends with him now he will open up to us more i'm hoping that dragging him out didn't hurt our relationship okay hank friend i didn't see it really go down but i was nervous about how we, how rude we were to him and i accidentally pressed aggressive i'm not really sure what to think about amanda I have a sneaking suspicion that she's an android after she quickly got that case. After like a couple, like it was the weird mechanical blinks. And then her being like a new case just popped in. I thought that was very interesting and very android like. So I'm not sure if maybe she's human and she has a chip in her or something, but I'm wondering why, if she is an android, why doesn't she have a button? Maybe she's trying to appear human to Connor, but why the deception? Maybe she is a cyber life prototype, prototype, like a super, super prototype. I have a very strong feeling that Amanda is not human right now, though, just based on that last interaction with her. And the whole umbrella thing was interesting. Connor brought an umbrella for her and they walked together with the umbrella, but she was standing out in the rain. And it just kind of brings me back to the very beginning when androids were standing outside in the rain and they showed the people under umbrellas, but the androids just kind of accepting that it's raining and not really doing anything about it to prevent themselves from getting wet. I just remember that scene of the android looking over from the android station that was outside without a roof on it and them just getting rained on. I don't know why that was such a vivid, I can like see it right now, but yeah. And then she walked out from underneath the umbrella again to say bye. And I don't know, I'm not sure why that was so significant to me, but I feel like I'm sensing some like themes with the game and I'm just trying to, I'm trying to grasp onto all of the themes as I can be to get the most information out of this game that I can, because I feel like these common themes are important. So those are a few that I've picked up on that are very interesting with Amanda. Not sure what to think of her still. I have my suspicions now though. Oh yeah, we can show the world stats. Why is check back living room window so low? Tom Hanks dog, 93% did. Everyone loves animals. At least most people love animals. Hippie shirt was actually the most taken. I was wondering about the stats on that one. Got that 420 shirt. We can read the news articles before we hop into the next one. But we left for Eden Club, so I'm guessing that will be our next place that we get to go with Hank and Connor, which will probably be an awesome ride, seeing as how we're going into a sex club with Hank and Connor. I feel like that's going to be an interesting time. All right, from Century, screening for depression, time to pull the plug. College ball, should varsity athletes accept sponsorship? Should varsity athletes accept sponsorship? Why wouldn't they? A uh, new touchdown replay technology, 100% accurate. Nice. Time to pull the plug, screening for depression. A recent study led by Dr. P. Gorgonsky has linked the amount of time we spend in front of the screens with the widespread antidepressant epidemic. From the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we are surrounded by screen-based devices. Of course, too much TV definitely won't make your eyes go square, but it can have other harmful consequences. We've known about this for a while. Just being disconnected, um, not having that human interaction, kind of like the article says, sun up to sun down, we're on our screens looking at something, doing something that requires technology. Not requires, but we like to watch our favorite shows after working all day in front of the computer. These include poor sleep, strained eyesight, lack of face-to-face -face interaction, driving emotional underdevelopment, and depression. 
Gorgonsky study found that two in three people take antidepressants and lack of social interaction is the leading cause. Meanwhile, the average person spends 82% of their time communicating through a device rather than in person, and relationships are suffering for it. In response, CyberLife has introduced a home psychologist. Add on for your Android in a bid to teach us how to communicate again. <laughs> in order to learn how to communicate again, talk with your non-responsive... What was that one term? I'm trying to remember what it was. Non-responsive communication or something? The upgrade costs $150, but can benefit the whole family with group therapy sessions and activities adapted for children and adults. Today, $150 is like one session if you don't have have insurance for a psychologist. Could even be more than that. Gorgansi is skeptical. Our society is hooked on technology. I don't think yet more technology is the answer. Exactly. Just go outside. Talk to someone. Exactly. Getting some fresh air can do some good. I forget what the average is, but I think it's like 15 minutes a day of just being outside can boost your mood and your overall feeling well-being by like 70 to 80 percent. It's a very large increase that even just going outside, taking a moment to go sit in the sun, even if it's raining, I think it's 20 minutes if it's raining or cloudy and 15 minutes if it's sunny to just go outside and feel the sun on you for a little bit can increase your mood by quite a bit. I mean, 70 to 80% mood increase. That's a pretty, pretty steady increase in mood. All right, was this the other one? Tainted love. Sales of Android intimate partners are exploding. It's funny to me, um, the picture of the Android and the the male looking like stressed out like you know i want to have sex with android and the wife being like why do we have sex with androids you should have sex with me but they do it to themselves they're obviously in a marriage where communication is not number one so it's not really the androids to blame you should be looking at your relationship and reevaluating what is important if it's sex with androids then go be with an android if it's sex with your wife or vice versa, it doesn't have to be this male female role that they're portraying here. But just talk about it. <laughs> communication. Once again, communication. Missing out on communication because we're relying on androids to make us happy versus the people that we swore that would make us happy forever, every day, for the rest of our life. So it's not really, I don't blame Cyberlife or androids for this one specific uh news article i blame the people that are in the relationship and this is something that i see all the time since tiktok and snapchat and all of those apps have become accessible to everybody relationships have definitely changed people think that you can just go out and find another love and not really spend time on the love that you've made no one's really sworn to love anymore they're just like, well, it's not working out with you. We had a really big fight, so I'm gonna go find somebody better. And then you're gonna run into the same problem because you have not worked on your inner issues that caused the first relationship to plummet. You're not working on yourself. You're not working as a team or together. You're just kind of jumping from one pot to the next and expecting the next one to be full of love. But instead you're damaging your internal love meter. So even today, yes, I see this. With androids coming out as sex partners, it's gonna get worse, for sure. Police to use marketing data to identify criminals early. Police, uh, politics and focus, are American senators really corrupt? Tainted love, sales of android intimate partners are exploding. Androids capable of satisfying customers' sexual and emotional needs have been a phenomenal success, such that Cyberlife has been battling to keep stores stocked. <laughs> Though the idea seems far-fetched initially, CyberLife's gamble has paid off. These androids offer nothing less than a full partner experience for women or men. The advantages are many. Androids take care of the house, cook to a high standard, and fulfill any sexual fantasy without ever saying, not tonight, honey, I have a headache. Oh, jeez. <laughs> While CyberLife's initially focused on urban singles to buy its models, this year's record divorce rate seems to show that many men and women today prefer to live with an android than a human partner. I mean, if it cooks, cleans, does all of your important 
errands for you and then is right there to please you at night. Seems enticing. This won't help the already plummeting birth rate, which raises serious questions about the roles androids play in the society. I'm seeing so many common themes. Divorce rates, unemployment rates, birth rates, all declining, except for divorce rates, which are skyrocketing. Lots of, lots of not great stuff here. November 6th, 8 p.m. Ooh, are we with Marcus? About to steal from Cyberlay? Look at all the shipping containers. <gasps> North. I can't remember that other guy's name. This is crazy. If they catch us, we're dead. What do we do now? We need to find the Cyberlife warehouse. That's where they keep the spare parts and the blue blood. Follow me. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is really cool. I bet it's about to get sketchy up in here. I hope we can do this as peaceful as possible. Don't let them see us. North is highlight, highlight. Okay, follow north. So yeah, let's stay with north. Sorry. Watch out. Now what do we do? Mm. I'll find another way. Okay. Keep following north because I feel like I should. There it is, Cyber Lake Warehouse. Oh, can I make this jump? How did they get over there? Oh, there we go. Climb up here. Follow North, follow Simon. Yeah, let's follow North. I like how we have little backpacks on. Oh, this is so sketchy. All of the things are so brightly colored. It would be very easy to spot us, the containers. The warehouse is up ahead. We're almost there. Okay. Cyber Life warehouses. We have everything we're looking for. First, we have to get rid of that drone. Okay. Leave it to me. Get rid of the drone. All right. Okay, so we're going to get struck. All right, let's see. Um, can't remember how to do RT. That's right. Would be spotted. Okay, so back up. be far okay too far um whoa okay this is gonna be sketchy okay let's do it Oh, 
Nice. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Good job, Marcus. Nice. Our relationship went up Wait, with Nori and Jericho. As much as you can. Okay, so we found the containers. Search crates. Okay. Ooh, blue blood. Let's go. What is it? <gasps> Hello? You were trespassing on private property. Oh, jeez. Your presence constitutes a level two infraction. I will notify security. John! God damn machine. Where is it this time? Oh, gosh. All right. Run away, grab and hide. Grab and hide. I saw the countdown John! and I just... I feel like running would have been bad. John! Knife? No, I don't want to murder anybody. Release? Uh, release. <gasps> there you are. What the hell are you doing? I was inspecting the platform. Everything is in order. Wow, he lied for yeah. us. Then I'm going back to the control station. Oh my so, god. Why did he lie for us? To make a report. Understood. I was scared if I held him, he would have just like yelled or I don't know. Let's what? Let's finish up and get out of here. Try to find I thought for blood. sure we were going to be <laughs> Okay. Um I guess he's becoming deviant now too. That was wild. Not how I was expecting that to go down at all. I feel like my heart's in my throat right now. Check the bigger crate. Okay. Can we like talk to him? I wonder what caused him to like deviate like that at the last minute. He was about to report us. like glowing oh they're androids and they're little packing Why container aren't you like us don't you want to be free oh free them close again yeah let's free them whoa we can cause androids to deviate maybe that's why the one when we touched it was deviated the security guard because when we touch them it opens their eyes wow interesting i think he didn't even know he could do that Nice, we got a lot of... That's all we can carry, let's go. Relationship boosts with that. That's crazy. Take me with you. He's on their side, we can't trust him. He took a risk for us. We can't just leave him here. Uh, North doesn't... With us. It's too dangerous. Why is it too dangerous? What are we talking about right now? Yeah, except... They come with us. It's not too dangerous, are you kidding me? Oh, North did not like that. I know where you can find more spare parts. See, it's what good that mean? we kept him. The trucks. They're full of bio components. They run on autopilot, but they can be driven manually with a key. Where is this key? Down there, in the control station. There are two mm. human guards. We'll have to get the key without being noticed. Oh, this boy. is suicide, Marcus. Our bags are full. We got what we came for. Let's go before they catch us. Oh, we can get more? Spare parts. There'd be enough for all of us. Yeah. We can't pass this up. And if we yeah. get killed, our people will have nothing. We can't take that chance. It's too risky. No, we should get it. Wait here. We came here I'm not for back a in reason. 10 minutes, go without me. Marcus. I'm coming with you. No, I'm going alone. It's not worth it for both of us to risk losing our lives. Okay, well, that helped our relationship more. Josh hated that. 
I know it's risky, but like that's the whole reason why we came here to begin with because we wanted to get the parts that everyone needed. We don't want to have to make a second trip. It would be too sketchy at that point. We're already here. We might as well. Oh, this is sketchy. Okay, he's like, nope, absolutely not. All right, maybe there's like a side window. Oh, there is. Some dogs like on a fence over there, freaking out. Wow, he's quiet. <laughs> okay. Goddamn dogs. What the fuck are they barking oh. at? Could be the weather. They don't like storms. A gun? I was gonna take my kids camping no gun. this weekend. No, 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 no. So much for that. Is Mike still in zone four? No, no, no gun. God, I'm so scared I'm gonna be seen. What is this? Looks like it. Cause a blackout? That could work. Then they couldn't see. Back. But how? There's some. Is this just the gun? Oh, there's something else. Oh, a screwdriver? Okay, yeah, let's do the blackout. Put back, short circuit. Yeah. I feel like that would be the better way. I don't want to grab a gun. I feel like... I just don't want to murder people, then... Then we've murdered. Shit. What's don't going be seen. On? Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe if we just kind of go this way. I got a flashlight somewhere. And wait for them. Here it is. Oh, <gasps> please don't come through the middle. Fuses are over there. I don't know shit about electricity. And I don't get paid to fix fuses. Oh god. Let's just flip <gasps> the switch. That doesn't okay. work. We can call maintenance. Sorry. Steal. What the fuck is this? There must be someone in here. Oh, the back window. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh my God, I'm so scared. Open the window. <laughs> I don't know what you think you're doing. But you don't leave, find us. Run, 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 run. They're gonna come outside. Go, 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 go. Get into the van. Did you get it? We have to leave, like, right now. Do we know how to drive this? Hurry! Get in! Hopefully it's an automatic. Drive out of the docks. Okay. It says, like, drive really big on the screen. <laughs> but it still registers. Okay. And it says autonomous. Okay. Wow, this is intense. But we got it. We, I think we're free now. We're out of the gates. Let's go. Man, that was sweaty. A truckload. Yes. We stole a whole truckload. We load. got bio components for everybody. Yes. We couldn't have done it without Marcus. Admired. Friend. I came to Jericho because. Oh, Josh delays us. Here, androids are free. Free to live in the dark, hoping that no one finds us. Free to die in silence, waiting for a change that's never gonna come. But I don't want that freedom. And I'm not gonna beg for the right to smile, or love, or stand tall. I don't know about you, but there's something inside me that knows that I am more than what they say. I am alive, and they're not gonna take that from me anymore. Our days of slavery are over. 
What humans don't want to hear, we will tell them. What they don't want to give, we take. We are people. We are alive. We are free. Marcus falling into that leadership role. Wow. Jericho's hero. Marcus got enough parts. I'm guessing we could have definitely been done, been found out if I didn't make all of the hasty decisions. 64% stole the truck full of parts. I mean, there were multiple times where we could have murdered guards. There were... There was like that knife on the ground and... The gun when we were stealing the truck full of parts. I just don't want to see the androids start murdering. It's one thing that they're stealing, and I don't really agree with Marcus saying that whatever they don't give us, we'll take. Which I guess he's referring to, like, the parts and stuff. I just, I struggle with this because I just don't want them to become this aggressive, fire-torching, blowing-up, murdering group. I like the movement and I am very interested to see how they can form together and get freedom for everybody, for all of them. But I just don't want the outcome of this Jericho mission to be founded in hatred and violence. I just don't think that's a good way to start off. So I didn't grab the knife. I didn't grab the gun. I wanted to keep the android silent and I honestly didn't see the prompt for what was it like hold or something until it was too late. I had already pressed. Once I see a timer, I kind of start freaking out and just press what I think is good in the moment because I was just nervous. But yeah, there was like other options. Grab and hide was actually 85%. Okay, so a lot of people thought that too. I saw like run. There was one with the guards where I'm guessing we might have just like fought them. I didn't want to do that. Um, I saw the countdown, I saw grab and hide, and I was like, yes, let's do that one. It's better than running. We're not leaving the android out in the open to alert everybody else. Seemed like the best option for sure. John became deviant, which I'm guessing because we touched them. I'd, I was nervous letting him go because, yeah, release 17%. <laughs> I think it was like, um, I don't remember what the other one was. I know that hold was there too. I saw hold and release and I didn't see the third option. Like I said, when I see a timer, I start to just go into panic mode and pick which one I think sounds good in the moment, which I don't know. I'm guessing release was fine because the human guard left. So I felt like that was the best option to not getting found out and resuming our search. Yeah. I do think it's really interesting that Marcus can just touch androids and they become deviant or they see what he is seeing or this is the theory that recently sprung into my mind that I wasn't going to share with you guys in the beginning. But now that this big chunky piece of information has come out where Marcus can touch an android and transfer the deviancy to it. Something that also Amanda had said that kind of sparked um, this theory for me as well. But I feel like the deviancy, the RA9, the them looking, seeing, feeling like they need to be free. Yes, it can be formed by reaching a breaking point, reaching that moment of realization. But I feel like, and Amanda said this, it can spread very quickly just by touching and i feel like that means it's some sort of virus or program or something that is throwing error codes for lack of better terms into these androids and it's causing them to mimic the human emotions that they think they're feeling so well and i'm not sure i i know it sounds crazy and i don't know if i'm on to something here but it was interesting that marcus just touched the androids and he just held the mouth of that guard and it became deviant that's kind of another thing that is like in that box of maybe it's just error codes or maybe it's just something that is happening to the androids and it's so easily transmitted because it's something that is misfiring in their software that is tapping into the real life 
human feelings. Whether they're actually feeling it, I don't really 100% believe that. I don't think that a program can feel, like physically feel anger, sadness, empathy. I think that it's something that was programmed to mimic human behavior and they tap into the extreme mode of that or something. Because I just, I find it hard to believe that pain sensations, like remember when Marcus fell through to get into Jericho and he hurt his side? Lucy literally took a fire torch to his side. Not an ounce of pain, not a wince, nothing. It's not as if they're becoming human. They're not, they don't have the capacity of, of doing that. It's not in their programming, but to have this deviancy, this RA9, this believing in something, I do think that RA9 and the worshiping and the statuette, I'm going to stick with my original theory of thinking that is programmed into them and maybe a way of spreading it or tapping into it is becoming deviant and then they can spread it to other androids. And I don't know if I'm making any sense. In my brain, I kind of like see the transfer and the spread of androids, like think of red dots just like popping up on a map and one touches another. The android wildfire just spreads of deviancy. That's that's kind of how I'm picturing it. And I think it's interesting that in this episode, it kind of affirms what I was thinking in the very beginning when I told you guys, I'm not going to share my theory yet. I need some more evidence to back it up. But this right here, it kind of just makes me feel like that's what's possibly happening. And it also makes more sense than just becoming human, like being beaten and then feeling mad and angry. It just I don't know. It makes me feel like some form of violence needs to take place or they need to witness violence or they need to be touched by another deviant android in order to reach that level of programming. It's very interesting stuff. All right, everyone, I'm going to stop here for today. We've done our three very amazing episodes today, and we got a taste of each one finally. Kara, Connor, and Marcus. And they were all very, very interesting. A lot of takeaways from each episode that we jumped into today. The first one with Kara was very creepy. I mean, we've pretty much seen it through everyone's eyes so far. Kara, Connor, and... Marcus, that some androids just don't have a good home. They're given to abusive people that do not have any right owning or operating on androids, and they're treating them like how they've been advertised as plastic. It's hard to say this because of what I know seeing things through Kara and Connor and Marcus's eyes, but I don't blame them. I think that Cortez and his red ice addiction and taking beatings on his androids because he's suffering in his own life mimics Todd's storyline as well. And he's obviously been through stuff with his wife. He hurts and he's taking it out on androids. Humanity is just, it's showing its colors in this game. If you give humanity something good, some people are gonna find bad things to do with that. It's just the way that the world works, unfortunately. There's very dark sides of life. And just like Lucy said, a little bit of shadow and a little bit of light, which one will win? For a lot of people, the shadowy side definitely wins and takes over. And for other people, the light takes over. It's just part of humanity, the ebb and flow of what humanity is. And this game does a very amazing job at portraying it portraying all walks of life. I do miss Carl and seeing his dialogue and that more open perspective on a human looking at androids. I like that a lot and I wish that they would incorporate that more because it's getting hard to look at humanity and be on that side. To remember that I'm human and to be on a human side because what we've seen even in today with Kara and that one guy, it's not good stuff. It's not looking good for humanity in many ways. They're doing deep, dark stuff in the back alleyways. There's news articles that are showing divorce rates and people losing their ability to talk to one another and birth rates declining. It's looking really, really bleak for humanity because of the integration of androids. Cyberlife's inability to really see an issue with how the androids are being brought into humanity. 
or even take accountability for what the world is turning into because of the technology that they have brought in. They're just like, oh, people are depressed? Well, let's just add more technology and add a psychologist app for $150, a one-time fee. And now you have a psychologist for everyone in your family. They're not owning up to what is going on with the world. They're not looking at the deeper, darker picture. And if they are, they're brushing it off for profit which seems very indicative of how life is today. A lot of very solemn, deep notes that I got out of today's episode that I'm interested to see how they're gonna play out in the future. I'm already seeing a lot of common themes like I've already talked about that I feel like they're going to address at the very end of this game because we've seen it so many times. We've seen the divorce rates, we've seen the birth decline, we've seen war starting, World War III, We've seen cyber life responding to very serious events with more technology and more buy this and buy that of our product. It will make your life better instead of being like, yeah, maybe we should tone down the androids. Maybe we should just have cooking, cleaning ones instead of sex ones. And maybe we should stick with the basics instead of adding more device communication into people's lives they just integrate more of it and expect a better outcome or expect the money which they are definitely getting as we saw in the news headline today of cyber life reaching a trillion dollars but thank you guys for joining me today i I'm definitely looking forward to coming back in and seeing what is going to happen with Kara, where she's going to go, if she's really going to try to cross the Canadian border, which I feel like is very sketchy. And also to see what happens with Marcus and Jericho and the relationships that he's forming in that idea. And his speech in the end was very interesting. It was moving. There were some parts of it that I didn't love that made me feel like this movement could turn aggressive in some ways, but I am ultimately the one that is playing and calling the shots here. We had multiple opportunities to murder humans in that entire cyber life warehouse break-in that could have gone much differently. So I'm happy with the decisions that I've made today. I'm not sure if I could have done anything better or differently, but that is what makes the replayability of this game very, very amazing and one that I will definitely play a couple times over to see the different outcomes of. And everything today with Hank and Connor was hilarious, funny. Hank is so disheveled, but now we kind of got a glimpse and an understanding on why. And I think that he was playing, as the title very much said, Russian roulette with the gun after he had been drinking. So it's sad to see Hank this way. I'm wondering if now that Connor is a friend to him, we can pick him up and dust him off and put him in a cold shower and tease him back to his normal self and be that friend for him that he obviously has not had. But once again, we'll just have to wait and see. So I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.